SAB Miller reporting results this morning and as we've come to expect from SAB Miller, steady growth uh, both in volumes and profit. That's been uh, the watchword for this company. Joining us now is the company's chief executive Graham Mackay uh, from London where of course uh, uh, SAB is globally headquartered. Uh, Graham, uh, looking at the lager volumes, I mean lager is at the heart of the business for SAB, lager volumes generally up, uh, down in Australia but otherwise strong growth and uh, in Europe in particular you say there that uh, volumes were up by 9% which comes as a bit of a surprise because uh, Europe is supposed to be in big trouble economically, consumers under strain, so you've been doing something right in Europe in particular. Yes, well, we think we've been doing things right. We've also been doing things to some extent differently in Europe because, as you say, conditions in Europe are difficult. In fact, they're probably more difficult there than anywhere else in the world right now and perhaps likely to remain so for a while. Uh, we have re-established volume growth in, in Europe, but uh, that has been at the expense, uh, to some extent, of margins, as you would have seen from, from, from the numbers. Um, in the rest of the world, uh, volumes and prices and profits are all up. So overall, we're, we're pretty satisfied with the results. Uh, steady, as you say, but uh, we think pretty creditable for the kind of times we're going through right now. Of course, Graham, operating in developed and developing markets, I mean, uh, you're going to uh, know firsthand uh, what kind of growth we're seeing from those markets specifically. I mean, uh, what kind of story is unfolding when you're putting the two against each other right now? We're talking about these two speed economies on a daily basis. Yes, well, I think that's a, that's a fair enough characterization. What we're seeing, if you, if you take the developed world, um, is the U.S. probably getting a bit better. Things uh, are, I think, uh, slowly recovering in the U.S. Confidence is up. Um, dining out uh, on-premise um, consumption is, is not doing too badly, again, starting to recover. Uh, Europe is in, in not as, as positive a state. Um, prices are still under pressure. Uh, consumers very uncertain. It does vary across the piece. Europe is, is, a, a, is a big uh, region and a number of different countries, but in general Europe is, is, is difficult. So those are the two uh, developed um, regions. As far as the rest is concerned, we're still seeing uh, pretty robust growth across the emerging markets. It is, it is slowing down um, slowly. Um, uh, in most areas, not so much uh, for instance in Africa, uh, where the growth rate is holding reasonably steady or has been holding reasonably steady but has been coming off slightly in, in Latin America. Uh, China people have been talking about a lot but we think that that's more due to uh, the political change there now than, than uh, a real drop in underlying consumer demand. Uh, the rest of Asia um, not doing too badly and uh, the Australian consumer going back to the first world for a minute is, uh, is um, pretty uncertain and uh, we think a bit nervous about the future so Australian consumer economy is also a bit soft but if you take our emerging markets uh, in the round uh, they're still producing uh, good growth, uh, growth well ahead of the developed economies and likely to continue to do that, we think. Graham, let's go back to the South Africa in SAB Miller. Obviously, the company started here. Uh, it's very much still uh, an exported culture, the SAB way, as we used to call it. Uh, South Africa was disproportionate in terms of contribution for some time. Where is South Africa now in the mix in terms of operations, revenue, profit? But also, where is it in terms of the export of executives? And it's interesting to see that Norman Adamy, who uh, has run South Africa for so long, came back from uh, Miller in the United States again to SAB in South Africa. He has now moved up to an executive uh, chairman kind of level here. But he's been replaced by a Peruvian. Now, that would be uh, quite a culture change at the headquarters in South Africa. Um. Yes, well, I, I suppose you could, you could say that if you take your questions in turn. Uh, South Africa is still an enormously important market and business for us, uh, uh, obviously financially, but uh, also symbolically and culturally and in terms of its influence on the, on the company. Uh, it's about 20% of, of overall uh, profits now, uh, roughly the same in, in volumes, and in fact, uh, volumes and profits have been doing very well recently under, under Norman's um, management. 
uh, beer volumes growing uh, slowly, uh, soft drinks a bit faster, and overall uh, profits and, and margins uh, increasing very satisfactorily. Uh, as far as management uh, talent is concerned, executives, culture, etc., uh, South Africa, of course, did supply or fund uh, the first flush of management who went out uh, across the world, myself included, of course, and uh, most of the original top team. Uh, I would say that uh, the situation is now much more in balance. Uh, South Africa is, is taking uh, managers, taking talent from the rest of the, of the world as well as giving it. Um, the top team in, in, the, uh, in the UK, the global team, uh, has moved quite decisively away from being totally South African dominated and has now a number of different nationalities on it. And the number of nationalities and uh, the sources of our management talent uh, rise as, as you go out into the top 40 and then top 200 of our, of our management, which is how we, we, we measure them. In fact, it's interesting that, um, as you mentioned, the, uh, the new appointee to run the South African beer business, Maurizio Leifer, coming in from Peru. Um, it's interesting that he is coming in from Latin America because Latin America itself has become uh, quite um, a strong source of talent for the group. Uh, we have big businesses there, obviously, so you would expect that, but it's certainly living up to the expectations. Yeah, uh, you spoke of margins uh, coming under pressure, Graham, in Europe specifically, but selective price increases coming through in most regions and that helped by a brand mix. Uh, what success are you reaping from getting consumers to migrate from lower to higher margin products? Yeah, well, th that is a, an integral part of our approach, our strategy. Uh, we have the objective of doing exactly that. And, and to that end, we make sure that in every country, over time, we develop what we call a price ladder, um, a number of different products and offerings uh, at different price points to suit different tastes, aspirations, affordability, and so on. And it's a constant endeavor to trade people gradually up uh, through that price ladder so that they can make uh, choices of um, different and perhaps some uh, higher quality or, or more aspirational brands. So if you look at, the, at our businesses around the world, uh, we generally tend to recover input cost price uh, in, increases through raising prices. But that, on top of that, uh, we do try to get uh, consumers to migrate up. Uh, through the price bands and uh, we think we are in fact extremely successful uh, at that we move them from affordable to mainstream from mainstream to what we call local premium from local premium up into international and super premium brands and it's a constant process in in almost every one of our markets